when I was uh, 21 years old, I could only speak English, which is typical for those of us from English-speaking countries. And I had many reasons why this was going to be the case for me for the rest of my life. And I was very confident of this because I had no natural talent. I had a very bad memory. Um, I couldn't travel to the country yet. I was too old. I felt too old. Um, and I was, I was sure that I was going to frustrate the native speakers and embarrass myself. And on top of this, in school, I did really poorly with languages. So I did actually get the opportunity to get into languages after I graduated university with a degree in electronic engineering, still only able to speak English. I moved to Spain. And I figured, this is it. This is going to solve my problems, living in the country. No. Six months later of living in Spain, couldn't speak any Spanish. Now, a sensible person would have given up at this stage and gotten the point. I'm not very sensible, though. So I figured, um, if I change my approach and change my attitude, maybe I can change my language skills. And what happened to inspire me to get into language learning was I met a polyglot. A polyglot is someone who can speak many languages. And the first time you meet someone like that, you can't help but feel really impressed. Like, for instance, uh, there's Richard from the UK, and there's one video online where he speaks 16 languages. Let me just show you a little clip here. You can see him... Um, I speak French, I speak Spanish, Czech, and Catalan, which is pretty impressive. And we also have Luca from Italy, and here you can hear him speak in uh, German, and Portuguese. Uh, we also have Susanna, who goes through here her e comunque, per me è Italian, and her Russian. Um, and uh, a, a very impressive video I saw once, uh, this 16-year-old uh, from America called Tim goes through 20 languages in one video. And in this, in this part here, you can see him go through... Wolof. Uh, um, Yiddish, Hebrew, Arabic, Turkish, Swahili, and uh, Hindi. So, wow! I, I met someone like this, and I was so impressed. I thought to myself, you know, I, I want to be like that. But the reason I wanted to be like that is because I wanted people to, to think I'm smart, to be impressed with me. And I met this polyglot at the start of my time in Spain, and with this very superficial motivation, just because it would be cool to learn a language, I failed. So what I discovered after those six months is, is one of the biggest problems we have in language learning, but we don't know it. And that's motivation. A lot of us start with the wrong motivation to learn a language. We're learning the language just to pass an exam, to improve our career uh, uh, prospects, or in my case, for superficial reasons, to impress people. And what I found is pe those polyglots I've just shown you in the video, the reason they're learning the language is because they're passionate about that language. They're passionate about the literature, and the movies, and being able to read in a language, and of course, to use it with people. And when I changed that uh, priority of using the language with people, I was able to learn the languages myself. But there are, there are a lot of things that people feel would not allow them to learn language. So I want to go through, I think there's five, I, I asked a lot of people, there's five major reasons they'd never get into language learning. So uh, let me go, go through some of these here. The first is that they've no language gene or talent. No language gene or talent. Well, what, is, what does that mean? I mean, sometimes this is actually just a self-fulfilling prophecy. In my case, when I hadn't learned language growing up or the six months of failed learning Spanish, um, I, it, was a, it, was, it was just me telling myself, I don't have the language gene, so I, there's no point in really doing any, real, any work in the language. Because I didn't put the work in, I didn't learn the language. It's, a, it's just a vicious circle. It's all in your head. There's no language gene. We all have it already. But let's, let's just imagine some people that would do better, because we, we've seen in school people uh, advance faster than the rest of the crowd. So let's say there's some inborn trait that gives someone a 20% advantage over the rest of the people. Good for them. 
But that doesn't mean that you can't. It just means you have to work 20% harder. And I found that, at least in my case, when I work harder, I can catch up with the naturally talented and even overtake them. So not having talent is not a good excuse. The next reason is that you're too old to learn a second language. Um, and I certainly felt this myself because up to 21 I didn't learn a language. And a lot of us feel that children, are, their, their brains are hardwired to learn languages better. Um, but is it really neurology at play here, or could it be the environment in which the child is learning the language? Well, a study at the University of Haifa in Israel actually found that under the right conditions, adults are better language learning, le learners than children. It sounds incredible, but it's, it's about your environment, it's about your motivation, it's about the enthusiasm and encouragement you get from other people. And when you think of it, Adults tend to be studying dusty old grammar books and doing boring exercises, whereas children are playing in the language, they're having fun in it. So I found that when I changed this to live through the language, not making it about studying the language, but living the language, then I was much more successful. So you're not too old to learn language. I've met people in their 60s starting to learn language and being successful with that. The next uh, excuse people would have is that they can't travel to the country right now. Now, maybe 20 years ago, this would have been a valid excuse, but nowadays, the world is smaller than you think. Thanks to the internet, we can connect with native speakers from across the planet, and you'll, you'll see that, um, in a, a lot of cases, they might want to learn your language, and then money isn't even an issue, because you teach them a little and they teach you a little. But even forgetting the internet for a moment, a lot of us live in cities or towns that are more international than what we think. And when I was traveling in America, I made it to Columbus, Ohio, of all places, to meet this very interesting polyglot called Moses. And he does what he likes to call leveling up, where he'll go to some public place and just see if he can find some foreigners and practice the language with them. And I joined him when we went to a mall uh, in, in Columbus, and we, the two of us managed to practice 12 languages. And just here in this clip, you can see he goes to his uh, Cantonese uh, Hong Kong, Lo, Lo and his Cambodian. <laughs> and you can see the, the guy really appreciated them trying. So um, you can learn a language anywhere. And I, I wanted to push this to the limit. My most recent project, I went to the middle of Brazil, of all places, to learn Egyptian Arabic. And I succeeded because, even though there were no Egyptians around me, I got on Skype, and I talked for one or two hours a day, and I managed to go up towards conversation levels. So no, not being able to travel to the country is not a good excuse. The next one people might give is they've got bad memory for learning all that vocabulary. And this, this was certainly what I felt, because when I first tried to learn Spanish, I'd get a big list of words, I'd try to go through them, and I forget them very quickly. But research on memory capacity has found that it's better when you revise these words with, uh, a, with the right frequency. And there's this technique called spaced repetition, where you learn the word, uh, you revise the word just before you would forget it. And it looks something like um, this, this forgetting curve. The red line is what typically happens when you first see a word, but to get it, um, into your heads and stuck there permanently, then just review it to make sure it goes, um, like review it one day later, then a week later, and then a month later. And there are uh, apps on your smartphone and there's free programs you can download that help you time all of this. Um, so that's great, but you can, you can learn the words faster and better if you uh, combine this with an image association technique. So for instance, let's say I wanted to learn that the Spanish word for to fit is caber. Well, what if I imagine then that it's barely possible to fit a bear in a cab? Cab bear is caber is to fit. So you do this for a lot of words, and it actually gets very easy with time, and you can learn vocabulary instantly. So no, you, having a bad memory is not a good excuse. Next, and I think the most important one, the people always say is that they're going to frustrate native speakers. 
And this is just so not true. I've been to many places, I've spoken to many people, and every time I attempt to use their language, they're overjoyed. They're so pleased that I'm, that I'm even trying. And I just, I just feel like, especially adults, when we learn a language, we're such perfectionists. We want everything to be just right. And perfectionism is a really bad thing in language learning because a language is a means of communication. It's a way to get to know new people and new cultures. And when you embrace this, it's okay to make mistakes. And I actually have a goal to make at least 200 mistakes a day, because then I know I'm getting somewhere, I'm using the language. So embarrass yourself, go out there, talk to people, it's okay. When do you think I was learning a language better? Here or here? So, anyone can indeed learn a language when you use it with people, and it's okay to use it early. And this is so important that you don't have to wait until you speak the language perfectly and fluently and so on. You can get into it uh, sooner than you'd expect, and it opens up so many doors to, to these other cultures. So, for instance, after I'd learned that Arabic in Brazil, I made it to Egypt, and I made it all the way deep into the Sahara Desert. I sat down in the sand with an Egyptian, and I had some tea, and we had this nice little chat here. Wow. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. And there, I'm just saying that uh, Egypt is so much, it's so vast, it's so great, it's so much more than just Tahrir Square in Cairo. And now, when I was speaking with him, I used the wrong word here and there, and I conjugated the wrong verb every now and again, but that's okay, because even with this conversational level, I had this fascinating conversation with him. And I've done this with other cultures and other languages. I even managed to learn a little American Sign Language. And here you can see, I was, Ju Juliana had asked me, uh, why didn't I learn Irish Sign Language? And I said, because when I'm in Ireland, I like to improve my Irish or my Gaelga, which I can then speak my, here. My so that, that was me on Irish radio saying about my travels and whatever. And I learned Irish for 10 years in school, and I wasn't able to say the most basic phrases after that. But as an adult, I went back to Ireland, and I embraced using the language as a beginner. And that helped me to reach this stage. And it's okay to be a beginner, it's okay to be conversational. But when you take this on, you take it to the next level, um, then you can reach very well. I mean, I've, I've got very good level in French, Spanish, a couple of languages. I've worked as a professional translator, and like here I'm having a Parfois quick chat Parfois, j'ai passé une heure pour uh, trouver une traduction. Ah oui, bien sûr. And, and that's great. That's what everybody thinks of when they're getting into language learning. They think, that's what I want to be. I want to be at this very high professional level, have deep philosophical conversations. And, and that's fantastic, and yeah, it's impressive when you see people like that. But rather than be impressive, I think it's so much better when you embrace the beginning stage of language learning. And one of the most amazing experiences I've had was when I was in China, on the train, uh, 2,000 kilometers deep into China, and I had a basic conversation of, what's your name? And it turned out I was given my Chinese name there on the train. And look, this is how it went. What's your name? Uh, I'm Benny. I'm Benny. Benny. I don't have a Chinese name. And then Li Hui <laughs> says, I'll tell you what, your name is Bunling. Bunling. Because uh, this sounds like your, your normal name, and it means ability or skill. And you know, um, just I could have that conversation even with a basic ch conversation level of Chinese. And I do have the ability, I do have the skill to learn language, but I always did. We all will always do. And the reason I have this skill is not because I was born with it and others weren't. It's a decision I made. And the problem a lot of us face is we feel that we're better studying and preparing for speaking a language someday. Because if we do it too early, the world would end from all this frustration we cause people. There are seven days in a week, and some day is not one of them. I say, rather than see if the world will end, a whole new world will begin if you try to learn a new language. So I hope you'll give it a try. Thank you.